Welcome back to our Lame Duck Watch special report, where we are still absorbing President Bush's doozy of a farewell news conference today. Among the dooziest subjects of inquiry was Hurricane Katrina, not just a natural disaster, but a cataclysm. 1,800 Americans killed, a great American city in many ways lost, and a presidential administration infamously flat-footed, if not criminally negligent, in its response. But when the topic of Hurricane Katrina came up during his farewell press conference today, President Bush still had his eye on the wrong ball. I thought long and hard about Katrina. You know, could I have done something differently? Like land Air Force One, either New Orleans or Baton Rouge. The problem with that and uh, is that um, law enforcement would have been pulled away from the mission and then your questions I suspect would have been how could you possibly have flown Air Force One into Baton Rouge and police officers that were needed uh, to expedite traffic out of New Orleans were taken off the task to look after you think about this for a second President Bush thought long and hard about Katrina and what he came up with was Maybe I could have done the photo op differently. Actually, on second thought, I nailed that photo op. Wow. Uh, not surprisingly, there were a number of follow-up questions after that gobsmacking answer. When asked what more needs to be done in New Orleans, the president used the opportunity to vehemently defend his government's response to the hurricane. You know, people said but the federal response was slow. Don't tell me the federal response was slow when there was 30,000 people pulled off roofs right after the storm passed. 30,000 people were pulled off roofs right after the storm moved through. It's a pretty quick response. Could things have been done better? Absolutely. Absolutely. But when I hear people say the federal response was slow, then what are they going to say to those chopper drivers or the 30,000 that got pulled off the roofs? The problem for President Bush here is that his legacy on this is our legacy on this as Americans, and it's New Orleans' legacy up close. We know what happened. It was well documented, mostly on tape. And the federal response to Katrina encompassed a heck of a lot more than the helicopter rescues. For the record, National Guard troops did not arrive in the area until two days after the levees were breached. FEMA did not finalize its request for buses to move people out of the affected area until six days after Katrina hit. FEMA trucks loaded up with ice were rerouted to Georgia and South Carolina and Maine. Maine? Yes, Maine. And it isn't as if we didn't all have warning. This was the language that the National Weather Service used that Sunday, which was the day before Katrina hit. Quote, most of the area will be uninhabitable for weeks, perhaps longer. At least one half of well-constructed homes will have roof and wall failure. Power outages will last for weeks. Water shortages will make human suffering incredible by modern standards. Armed with that dire warning, here's what our leaders in the federal government were up to. As a historical reminder, Katrina made landfall on Monday, August 29th. That day, President Bush spent the morning eating birthday cake with Senator McCain in Arizona. If you look at the official White House photo album for August 29th, 2005, this is what you see. The next day, on Tuesday, as reports came in of looting in New Orleans and thousands of people trapped in the Superdome at the convention center, President Bush traveled to Southern California and was photographed playing a guitar with country music singer Mark Wills. On Wednesday, when things were getting really, really, really bad, FEMA seemed more concerned about how much time Michael Brown had to eat dinner than whether food and water were getting to those people who were stranded in New Orleans. Quoting the Associated Press, a FEMA official emailed Brown to tell him that thousands of evacuees were gathering in the streets with no food or water, and that estimates are many will die within hours. A short time later, Brown's press secretary, Sharon Worthy, wrote colleagues to complain that the FEMA director needed more time to eat dinner at a Baton Rouge restaurant that evening. Quote, he needs much more than 20 or 30 minutes. The same day, Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice was heading out for vacation. Her day reportedly included hitting some tennis balls with tennis pro Monica Seles and taking in the musical Spamalot on Broadway. I hear it's great. Killer. The next day, Thursday, 
as newspapers across the country ran headlines like New Orleans in chaos, looting, mass evacuation, and shortages of food and water plague city. Condoleezza Rice was seen buying Ferragamo shoes on Fifth Avenue. And Michael Brown was admitting that FEMA had just learned about the thousands of Katrina victims stranded at the convention center. That's the legacy of the federal response to Katrina. It's public record. A Bush administration ill-prepared and not just slow, but lead-footed in response. So much so that aides to President Bush had to put together a DVD of news coverage to show him how bad things had gotten in New Orleans because the news media were covering it, even if his own government wasn't. The coup de grace here? President Bush's speech in Jackson Square two and a half weeks later, a speech that had to be lit with floodlights since much of New Orleans was still without power. As all of us saw on television, there's also some deep, persistent poverty in this region as well. That poverty has roots in a history of racial discrimination, which cut off generations from the opportunity of America. We have a duty to confront this poverty with bold action. Remember in the wake of Katrina, President Bush's bold action to turn the nation's attention to confronting poverty? Remember that?